اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملل العلى ليوم الدين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد حتى ترث الأرض ومن عليها أنت خير وارثين الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the benefaction of him subhanahu wa ta'ala is immense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers us in this age inside of a circle of his remembrance subhanahu wa ta'ala and by virtue of him gathering us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately desires to gather us with him subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never does he gather people inside of this world in his remembrance subhanahu wa ta'ala and placed them as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inside of one of the meadows of his meadow subhanahu wa ta'ala save that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise also desires to gather us inside of a supreme meadow an eternal meadow felicity and in proximity to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and gazing upon him jalla jalalu wa ta'at adhamatu in the good company of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam and those anam Allahu alayhim and all of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's benefaction has extended unto min al-nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhada'i wa salihina whether they be from the prophets whether they be from those who are truthful whether they be from those who are witnesses of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala or those who are holistic in their piety and in their servitude of him jalla jalalu wa ta'ata adhamatu wa hasuna ulaika al-rafiqa and what a beautiful and kind company they are we praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that tawfiq and tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when we desire exactly what he desires subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires to be known and he desires to be praised and so whenever somebody increases in knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the desire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we increase in knowledge and that is tawfiq that is providential success from him subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever you increase in praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is his desire subhana and so thereby it becomes a manifestation of this tawfiq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designates for those who he desires from amongst his slaves jalla jalalu wa ta'at adhamatu these are from what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam when asked and clarified alamatullah fi ma yurid there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those whom he desires subhanahu wa ta'ala and each and every single one of us would be intelligent as the human being is like a semiotic creature the ability to interpretate signs and we would be intelligent and really intelligent if we began to try to discern and thereby interpretate the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast inside of our lives in order to see whether or not we are of those who he desires jalla jalala wa ta'ata adhamatu gatherings are special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we heard in the hadith inside of sahih muslim lillahi al malaika that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels yatufun fi turuq that they will roam they will roam the streets of planet earth yaltamisun ahl al dhikri and they seeking in a sensual sense seeking to touch to find those people who are in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the remembrance of his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates upon our tongue remembrance of him subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a bestowal unlike any other bestowal of the divine jalla jalala wa ta'at adhamatu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam when he described the mutafarriduna those people who are unique upon the face of planet earth they are those who lose themselves they're lost they dissipate they annihilate inside of the remembrance of Allah jalla jalalahu wa ta'ala adhamatu and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala darajat its degrees with him jalla jalalahu wa ta'ala adhamatu of the highest manifestations of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam we're in a world where people gather to remember other than Allah jalla jalalahu wa ta'ala adhamatu but we 
on this night, and it's a blessed night, and it's blessed by virtue of the actions of Banu Adam, that we, we've gathered to remember the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, to remember the people of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, and to remember the age of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, that Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by wal asr, just like Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by that life, la amruka. We've, been, we've gathered for that purpose. And it's a noble purpose with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reward beckons, not just in the world to come, but likewise inside of this world for the one who yastuk ma Allah ta'ala is sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and union with him and seeking the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallama and union with him. The Imams rahimahullah ta'ala when they speak about the greatest manifestation of happiness and the greatest manifestation of felicity, it is what is known as ma'iyah. It's, it's to be with. Ma'iyah to Allah. Yani to be with God. Ma'iyah to Rasulillah. It is to be with the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallama. And what contradicts that which is punishment or ch chastisement is whenever you're separated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fragmented from him, or separated from his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallama. There are those, as the Rasul sallallahu wa sallam informs us inside of the Sahih of Imam Muslim, there are those who are inside of the hellfire, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety, for security, and for protection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani we seek refuge, from Allah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, he said that they're placed inside of hell, bila adhab, and they have no punishment inside of hell. And the Imam rahimahullah ta'ala, that they will say, that how is it that somebody inside of the hellfire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not being punished? And they say the answer is not being punished in a way that ordinarily most minds are accustomed to. As it comes, quote unquote, upon the tongue of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. But the reality of their punishment is separation. That they're in an abode in which they're separated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His name, subhana, is not mentioned in the midst of Nar al Jahim. They're in an abode in which they're separated from the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. For those who knew him, for those who see him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, that there is unbearable. Radiallahu anhum wa rahim, those people who were situated around the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, they would consider themselves sensually to be in a state of nifaq, to be in a state of hypocrisy whenever they were separated from the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. That great reality of union in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Atiq, Abu Bakr Al Siddiq, Radi Allahu Anhu Arda, Wa Shauqa Li Rasulillah. How can he would spend his nights when there was a physical, not spiritual, when there was a physical separation from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Those who had experienced him spiritually and physically, they felt separated. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama takes flight to the barzakh. Wa shawqali rasulillah. He would spend his nights crying. Whenever he would mention the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Ista'bar in the hadith. Sayyidina Abu Bakr would begin to choke in tears. Could not finish the tradition. One of the secrets why Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa rda relates very few ahadith of the Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam. It was difficult for him, radiallahu anhu wa ra, to utter the name of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam. Although there's ma'iyya, ruhiyya, although there's a spiritual witness with the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he experienced something far more perfect than that. The juxtaposition of body and soul, life as clinically defined by the Imams, rahimahullah ta'ala. When he engages that Imam al Usaidi rahimahullah ta'ala, saying, Alhamdulillah, radiallahu anhu wa ra, the only words that Alhamdulillah can say to a Siddiq, Al Atiq, radiallahu anhu wa ra, is Nafaka Handala, Handala, 
نافق حنظلة حنظلة is a منافق يا حنظلة ما تقول حنظلة what is it that you are saying Abu Bakr says that you're a منافق that you're a hypocrite he says يا أبا بكر do you not see when we're in the presence of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم and that tongue that tongue of truth of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يذكرنا he reminds us of the abode of union Jannah he reminds us of the abode of separation نار الجحيم كأننا رأي العين it's as if we're gazing upon it saying الحمد لله says and then when we leave the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama for our women folk, we leave the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for our children. We leave the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for our commodities, for dunya, al-faniya, al-tafiya. Do you not see the state what happens? Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu warda says, nah, I have some of that. I experienced that. These are imams of religion who preserve the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr min kutab al-wahi of those who scribe the revelation that each and every single one of us recite. Sayyidina alhamdulillah al-Husaydi rahimahullah ta'ala min kutab al-wahi from those who scribe the revelation that each and every single one of us recite by day and by night. And look how they feel when they're separated from the Nabi. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. We were in a state of separation, and what we ask Allah Taala for safety and security from, when although Allah Taala بقدر by virtue of His decree سبحانه وتعالى has decreed that we are physically separated, what is يعني punishment in reality for us? is when we are also spiritually separated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. For many of us, there has not been a night where we've cried out for him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Maybe for many of us, there has not been a night where we've mentioned him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. We met a people. We met a people, radiallahu anhum wa rdahum, who've now gone onto the abode of union ma'a Rasulillah with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama who cried themselves to sleep mentioning his name sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama we met a people in a time that was blessed by virtue of such people existing upon the face of the earth and now when we mashallah ta'ala we look at ourselves we look at our age, it's an age of separation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam. They desire those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tilka al-umma kad khalat. That is a nation kad khalat. That they've gone radiallahu ta'ala anhum wardahum bil ghalibiyya. Ordinarily gone. They were people who desired the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam so much such that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam ya bruz that he manifests sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahi wa sallam so that they see him in ages that they see the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas rahimah wa allahu ta'ala of those who was young when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took flight he said once he's sleeping Radiallahu anhu warda, and then he sees in the dream state the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahibi wa sallam. Yani, which one of us, quote unquote, after the fact, have seen the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They're the people, and we have met such people who see the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single night. They're the people, and we've met such people. Who are realizations of the word of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Man yara'ani fil manam sayarani yaqavatan. That whoever sees me in the dream state will see me in the wake state. People in the age in which you and I, quote unquote, live, but it's a very different age that they live. Rabbi Allah Taala anhum wa ardahum. And so he sees the Messenger of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inside of the dream state. And then when he wakes up from the dream state, radiallahu anhu warda, that is punishment. That is torture. That is chastisement. Separation from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
And so Abdullah ibn Abbas, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says the only thing that comes to his mind is to go to his aunt, Sayyidatul Maymuna, radiallahu anha, wardaha, the blessed wife of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last of those who the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, married. And he explains his state to Maymuna. And radiallahu ta'ala anha, Maymuna, that very blessed woman by virtue of name and by virtue of reality, she has the tiryak, she has the cure. And so she goes in and she brings out a burder of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He needs to be connected. He needs to touch something that touched the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. A curative for somebody to touch that which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam touched. La yushfil ghalil. But Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, he needs more. And so Sayyidina Hum, Sayyidina Maymuna radiallahu anha wardaha, she now goes in and she brings out a mirror, not any mirror, the mirror of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam. And she gives it to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu wardah, he takes hold of the mirror, he opens up his eyes and he sees the face of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam. That is a definition of a lover. That is a definition of a yearner, of one who yearns for the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam, such that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam yearns for them. It's just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam when he spoke about the likes of Abu Darda, when he spoke about the likes of Abu Dhar, when he spoke about the likes of Salman al Farisi, when he spoke about the likes of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum. He said, Jannah, that abode of union, yearns for them. Yearns for them. Jannah, it yearns for them. Not just that they yearn for Jannah to Allah. And as the Imam al Habashi, rahimahullah ta'ala, that Jannah has no meaning for me whatsoever, save that my beloved is in there. That is the meaning of paradise. That you now are in union with the Rasul and in union with the Rasul, you're in union with Allah. And so thereby we can say that those, radiallahu anhu, arda, rubbu, that they never knew a day, like Aisha, in Sahih al-Bukhari, she said, we never knew a day save that the Rasul, sallallahu wa sallam, would be in our house. Never a day. Can you imagine what is your Monday? Ma'a Rasulillah. Tell me about your Tuesday. Ma'a Rasulillah. Uh, what about Wednesday and Thursday? Ma Rasulillah. What about Jumma? Yomulana? Ma Rasulillah. What about the Ghad and Lil Yahud? Ma Rasulillah. What about the Ghad and Nasara? Ma Rasulillah. Can you imagine every one of your days? Ma Rasulillah. They were spoiled in goodness. Why? Because they were good souls. That's the ones that the Toyibuna, they the Toyibat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in nur, in nur subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, good men, good women who Allah ta'ala places alongside the best of all of those creatures that he's created and his name is Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama. And so now we consider the time inside of early Mecca where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam is inside of the cave of Hira. In Hira sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. What does it mean that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is inside of Hira and you are apart from him? You are separated from him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Did they not yearn to be in the cave with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam like every lover? Just like Abdullah ibn Abbas is going to touch the mirror. Just like Abdullah ibn Abbas is going to touch the burda. Every lover of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam yearns to touch hira. Yani, to be with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. Al-Imma, the imams of this religion radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa rdaham al-batiniyya. That the majlis inside of the world of spirit is in hira. That's where you'll find the qutub. That's where you'll find the afraad. That's where you'll find those unique ones with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nuqaba. That's where you find them meeting inside of Hira to be in the space and the place that the blessed feet that went beyond the universe stood upon. That the blessed forehead 
yeah, and impressed itself upon that the eyes that gazed upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gazed upon. Anything that brings us into a state of union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam by definition blessed. And the Ummah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam that has been attacked from all sides. There was those as of recent who mentioned to the Fakhir, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless yani, that they saw a dream of a reality, Muhammadiyah. And that Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan rahimahullah ta'ala was taking that reality and beginning to conceal the reality of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Why? Because from all sides they saw the armies of Rum begin to emerge in search of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama to do him harm. Not so disfamiliar to what we experienced inside those early years of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Take for an example a young, a young boy. And there were many a great a young boy in the age of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. This one, radiallahu anhum wardahum, young, that he would drink the blood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Kaif. What type of mahabba? What type of love is that? What type of shawq? What type of yearning is that? That you want the blood of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi to run through your veins. Inna shaitan yajri majra damf ibn Adam as he says in Bukhari that the devil flows through the blood of the son of Adam. But there are those who Rasulullah flows, flows through their blood. Radiallahu anhum wardahum. His father, that Abdullah ibn Zubair, rahimahullah ta'ala. His father, Zubair, radiallahu ibn Awam, rahimahullah ta'ala. How is it when he hears inside of Mecca that they've killed the messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people desiring to do him harm when all he desires is to do them good. And he goes in Mecca in search of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He can't find the Nabi. So where does he go? Hira. He ascends unto Hira. Anhu and there he sees Tala'atul Mustafa. Can you imagine? When you're ascending the mount and there Tala'atul Mustafa, the summit of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam images. What a sight, subhanallah. What a sight for the young lad. And he sees the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa and he's filled with happiness, dragging his sword, a sword upon his back. Young, the sword bigger than him. And the Rasul said, whose sword is that? He says, my dad's. He says, what are you doing with your dad's sword? He says, Ya Rasulullah, they're saying that they have killed you. In Mecca, the rumor is that you've been killed. And the Rasul says, and if I had been killed, then what? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I would have killed every last man in Mecca. I would have killed every last man. Man in Mecca, that's a heart, a heart that lives for him, a heart that lives in defense of him, a heart that de defends him and dies for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Who are they? What will it mean for Sayyidina Zubair ibn Awam? The day comes as we've reached inside of our narrative of the seerah, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallama Although he goes ahead spiritually to Abyssinia sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, he's going to leave Sayyidina Zubair ibn Awam behind physically. That he goes beyond the great nutfa, Sayyidina Zubair radiallahu anhu warda. Think about the heart of Sayyidina Zubair. Now you're with him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, only to be separated from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama. Think about many of those Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, in early Mecca, that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, he establishes two circles of light, two circles of prophecy, prophecy, two circles of proximity, sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, two circles of union, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, spiritually. But one is also physically, and one lacks the physics. You're in Dar al Arqam. You're with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam physically. If you're in Dar Sa'id ibn Zayd al-Adawi, 
then you're with him spiritually, but there's a separation from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. How would it have been for the likes of Sayyidina Khabbab ibn al-Rat, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who we heard about in the narrative, yet he was tortured for the sake of Allah ta'ala, tortured for the sake of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam simply lifted and cast into fire, cast into fire, Sayyidina Khabbab ibn al-Rat, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, warda. The marks that you would see upon his body to the day that he died, radiallahu anhu, warda, resurrected like that. Proof, not just of life, proof of love, radiallahu anhu, warda. How is it for Sayyidina Khabbab, when he's sitting in Dara Sa'id, and knowledge that the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, is inside of Arqam? How is it for Sayyidina Sa'id ibn Zayd, and Sayyidina Fatima bint al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, to be sitting inside of Dar al-Sa'id and knowledge that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa wa is inside of Arqam. How, how, how is it for them? For Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, rahimahullah ta'ala, you're inside of Dar al-Sa'id, but you have knowledge that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam are not too far away. He's inside of Dar al-Arqam. How? The heart of a lover to be separated from the Nabi. And the Abdullah ibn Mas'ud there, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam will cast him across the Nufa. Cast, cast him across the Red Sea to the lands of Abyssinia. A blessed land. Ardu Siddiq. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. He called it a land of Siddiq. A land of truth. But you're not with Sadiq al Masduq. You're separated from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. How then do you feel? How do you feel? How did they feel? Hearts, living hearts, connect to living hearts. Living hearts, they feel the pain, just like they feel the joy of hearts that they connected to. Did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam not say about Sayyidina Fatima? Did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not say about Sayyidina Ali? Did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not say about Sayyidina Hassan al Hussein? Ma yubsituhum yubsituni. Ma yuqbiduhum yuqbiduni. That whatever puts me into a state of expansion and happiness places me in a state of happiness and expansion. Cave. But likewise, that which constricts them constricts me. Hakad the nature of hearts. Junood, as he says, These are arrayed soldiers, the Prophet, Al-Qulub, Al-Arwah, Al-Insan, souls like with like, as he says, Talaf. He said, souls that knew each other and that know each other and continually increase in knowledge of each other in the world of spirit, in the world of physics, they bond. And so what then when they separate from each other? How is it? How is it for the likes, mashallah, tabarakallah, of whom Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu arda, Dhunnurain, although he's blessed, he's blessed, radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Uthman, because he can sit in Dar al-Arqam, and he can gaze at the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. Yani Uthman, beautiful, beautiful Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, rahimahullah ta'ala. In the riwayah, Ashbah bi ibn Ibrahim, he bears a striking resemblance, mashallah, tabarakallah, to the Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, his forefather and the forefather of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a riwayah, he bears a striking resemblance to Nabi Muhammad, to his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam Sayyidina Uthman, beautiful, ashbah bil malaika, mashallah ta'ala, bearing a, a, a striking resemblance to the angels. Uthman ibn Affam, and is it not the beautiful for the beautiful? Allah, the Prophet gives his beautiful daughter Ruqayya to that beautiful man, Uthman. The Rasul will thereby marry another one of his beautiful daughters, Umm Kulthum, to that beautiful man, Uthman. The Rasul said, if I had 40 daughters, I would marry every one of them to Uthman. Uthman, beautiful. Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhu warda. But the day comes where the beautiful must separate from the source of beauty, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. How then is it for Uthman? Yes, Bushra, 
as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Uthman and Ruqayya, my daughter, they're the first ones to embark upon the exodus. They're the first ones to migrate since Lut, <laughs> from the time of Lut. They're the first ones. They set the sunnah of migration in motion. Radhi Allah ta'ala anhuma. But they're apart from Rasul Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. How is it for Sayyidina, mashallah ta'ala, Sayyidina Uthman? How is it for Sayyidina Tarruqayya? Radhi Allah ta'ala, those really beautiful beings. They would mention inside of Abyssinia. Think about this, the beauty of these realities. That they mentioned inside of Abyssinia that there was a group of the elite of Abyssinia that whenever they would set eyes upon Sayyidina Tarruqayya, they would all dance out of happiness and ecstasy. Dance, yani. Whenever they saw Sayyidatul Ruqayya radiallahu anha wa due, due to her beauty. And Sayyidatul Ruqayya, modesty, huh, she disliked that. Your humility, she disliked that radiallahu anha wa huh. Allah ta'ala deal with that. They, they then are going to go out with the Najashi. Because the Najashi has in, insurrection inside of Abyssinia. Every one of them are killed in battle. Of those who would die in the presence of Sayyidina, I mean, who would dance in the presence of Sayyidina Ruqayya, radiallahu anha wardaha. You know, the Rasul yearning for those two beautiful realities. The Rasul Sayyidina would send a messenger onto them to bring them news, to give them good news of the progress inside of, mashallah, tabarakallah, inside of Mecca to Makarama, and to ultimately summon them back. But the messenger is delayed. And when he eventually returns back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, the Prophet asks, what delayed you? And he makes excuse after excuse after excuse, but listen to the tongue of truth. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, it was the beauty of Ruqayya that delayed you. Shuf, the beauty of Ruqayya that, that delayed you. If that's the beauty of Ruqayya, what about the beauty of Abu Ruqayya? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. What about the beauty of Abu, of, of Abu Um Kothum? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. What about the beauty of Abu Zahra? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. The human being hardwired. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, for beauty. So how then is when we're separated from beauty, not just beauty, but the source of all beauty, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. What about those? Like the great Ashama, Ibn Abjur, the Najashi, the Nagashi in and of himself, the emperor of Abyssinia, of Aqzum. What about him? Somebody of profound intelligence. Yet he took the seat of power when he was only nine years of age. Nine! When he took the seat of power. After his father had been treacherously murdered, and his uncle thereby instilled inside the way in the seat of power, and thereby Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a lightning bolt from the heavens to kill his uncle. And then what the, the, the Hawashi of Abyssinia, do you want to place the sons of the uncle 12? It's Nasha. 12 of them into into, into white the positions of the power. Well, where should you do? And Nahum Hamqa. And they found that each and every single one of them, not like one or two or three, all 12 hamqa, stupid. Why? Separation and ignorance of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the only thing they can do then is to now fetch the Najashi, who's only nine years of age, Ashama, Ibn Abjur, that great individual, that one who Aisha, radiallahu anha wardaha, says when he died, light emanates from his grave. That one, light of the shuhada, that one, that one, that one who the Prophet Sallallahu in Bukhari said his body was brought and placed in my masjid, in the Qibla of Muhammad, facing Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahi wa Sallam and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahi wa Sallam, he prayed Salatul Ghaib, the prayer of separation, the prayer of absence. He's the only reality that we have ever heard that the Rasul Sallallahu prayed that prayer over. He's the only reality that we know in Al-Bukhari that the Sahaba summoned by the Nabi Al-Azam Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahi wa Sallam prayed over. Today, a righteous man has died. Akhukum Ashama, Suhma, Suhma in riwayas. Radiallahu anhu warda. Sallu ala akhikum. Pray over your brother. That Ashama. What is it like for Ashama? 
What is it like for him? He was not blessed to see the Rasul Sallallahu with his eyes. Physics. But he saw him with the eyes of his heart. He was not blessed to touch the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Physics. But he touched him with the hand of his heart. He was not blessed, mashallah ta'ala, to embrace the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Physics. But he embraced him with the love that Allah Ta'ala deposited inside of his heart for Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, a righteous king in whose land nobody is wronged. Nobody. 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 What type of praise is that from Rasul Allah, the tongue of truth Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for that great reality, Ashama? What type of reality is it? And the people who we're unfamiliar with, but don't worry, he's known with Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's known inside of the Mal al-A'la. He's known, mashallah ta'ala, in the barzakh of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam wa lima. Why? Liannahu ma'ahu sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallahu wa sallam. Because now he is with him. That there, Allah ta'ala alam for the faqir, it's unimaginable that you live and he lives, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, but for whatever reason, you're not brought together in union, physically. It's unimaginable. Can you imagine that the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, was in Ghawsiyah there, in the mosque Ghawsiyah there? How would it be for us? You're going to be sitting here listening to us ramble on? Shuf, oh, oh, where? Cave. Where would you be? Then think about those in Dar al-Sa'id in relation to Dar al-Arqam. Cave, if you heard that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was now inside of Medina to Manawara. You ask our beloved Adam there who just came back from Medina to Manawara. Ask him how he feels. Ask him. Now to leave the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from where you perceive not to put your back to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he's always facing you. How then do you feel? How is it for those, the great Imam as an example saying, always Ibn Amr al-Qarni rahimahullah ta'ala he comes to Medina and the Rasul Sallallahu has left Medina. Gone out Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallahu wa Sallam in order to reach the likes of you and I. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam and awaits. He waits and he waits and he waits and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam has not yet returned. And now what is it? My mother or Rasul Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi wa Bir, walidati. Now do I piety? Goodness to my mother, I return back to the Yemen, there. Or, Shuf, do I wait for the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How do you think he feels in that moment? The one who the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi said, Rubba ash'af akbar, mudfu'an bil abwabi, lo aqsum ala Allahi la abarra. Many a disheveled, dirty person, a person who, if they asked for your daughter, you would never, never give them in marriage, the Nabi says in Sahih Muslim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If they come to the doors of men, the door is slammed shut inside of their face. Who that? That's Ashab Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ghazali says, if you were to see those lovers, those people in union with the messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you would slam the door in their face. Somewhat uncouth. You see, it's all fairy tales for us now. The reality is somewhat different. Radiallahu anhum wardahum. Yani ra'aytu unas. Lo ra'aytahum la hasibatu majaneen. Sayyidina Hassan, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala says, I saw the people, if you were to see them, you would consider them to be crazy. Crazy what? In love. Crazy in love. Unbearable for them to be separated from the Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. How did Sayyidina always feel in that moment? That he has to make a decision, a very painful decision, no matter how blessed it is. To go back to his mother and leave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam behind. It's only by virtue of understanding that pain that you understand his maqam with Allah ta'ala. It's only by virtue of understanding that pain that you understand his maqam with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Such that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab. Such that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib to that waste of Qarni. Search for him, find him, find him. And when you find him, ask him for dua. Sahaba, eyes that saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asking somebody who never saw the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa for dua. 
علي باب مدينة مدينة علم إن حاكم عمر علم علم من البخاري asking asking that reality say no way been Ahmed رضي الله عنه بالدعاء and when they meet Uwais finally at the Hajj and they mention it to say no Uwais Uwais is only consideration a ذكر نبيسم did he mention me by name you think about that did he mention me by name because that's a type of union that my name which is indicative of my reality was upon that tongue upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his eternal word his universal word a dhakarani bi ism dhakaraka bi ismik he mentioned you by name for baka and he cried for baka and he cried for baka and he cried and he said what is it he's addressing umar he's addressing ali karam allah wajahu radi allah an and what is it that you know of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only knowledge you have of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is knowledge of his shadow and he has no shadow we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for union in him subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers upon that mawqif alongside the rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam beyond jannat naim beyond faradis wal firdaus al ala nadirina ila wajhi allah al karim gazing upon the beautiful countenance of allah jalla jalalahu wa ta'ala azamatu we ask allah ta'ala for union that allah ta'ala places us with the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama ayna ma kunna haythu ma kunna wherever whenever we may be that we find ourselves with the rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama we ask allah ta'ala for husn wa khatima that allah ta'ala gives every one of us a good ending the nature of a good ending if it could articulate it would say ghadan alqa muhibba muhammadan wa hizba the next moment i meet my beloved muhammad and his people